You know the influencer types? Salesmen? What many find from their knower judge are unacceptable about these types is that they have a tendency to tell you what you want to hear. Well, why do they do this? They do this to get you out of your defensive posture. If you and the influencer disagree, then you're likely to cling defensively to your theory, and he's got a long road to hoe to get you to see his point. So rather than put you in that position, he agrees with you. He makes you feel comfortable about your position so that he's not seen as wrong and requiring a debate from you on the subject. You've been taken from a strong knower-judger position to a learner-researcher position where you might see some new facts or data that the influencer wants you to see. Now picture this. Your boss comes up to you and barks something at you that you know is totally inaccurate. Perhaps he claims, Fred screwed up the production of an order and now we're going to have to work overtime to get it out. Now you've observed that the order is finished and ready to ship. That Fred, in fact, has done a valuable job at communicating with the customer to assure that this huge opportunity is capitalized on. Your boss sees it differently. What do you say? Well, how about, you're right, boss. What? Are you nuts, Kim? This is inflammatory stuff the boss is tossing around. It's a landmine, and he's dead wrong. Well, of course he's inaccurate. Fred did not screw it up. In fact, it's fine. Okay, go ahead and tell him that. No way, boss. Fred didn't screw this order up. It's fine. What happens next? You know, my dad came home frustrated from work at the mega corporation where he spent his career, and he joked one day about what his boss had told him. Don't confuse me with facts, he said. My mind's made up. And so it is. Let's learn from the influencer I described at the beginning. Since the boss most likely was firmly in his knower judger, and felt strongly that he knew everything about the situation, by challenging that belief, you place yourself squarely in his sights, and he's likely to defend himself by jumping all over you. Been there? Done that? So the question is how to get him to stop defending his inaccurate position and look at the facts. You tell him he's right. It's like pouring cold water on a burn, like a fire extinguisher on flame, like aspirin to a hangover. By agreeing with him, he will most likely abandon his need to defend himself. And there's no way you become the enemy. In fact, in his mind, you probably graduate to brilliant. When he feels unthreatened, or rather his inaccurate understanding of the situation feels unthreatened, you have at least an opportunity to get his learner researcher involved to see the data that you have. Let's get out of this the best we can might be a follow-up. I'll contact the client and assess the damage. And of course, there is no damage. What stops us from doing this? That all too human urge to be right. What difference does it make? This is Mission Over Meeting Emotional Needs 101. I'm Kim DeMott, corporate co-driver, and this is another moment of clarity.